I've been playing 200 big blind buy-in games recently, so bigger than the typical 100 cap that I have exclusively played before. Poker is a situational game. I'm going to give you my personal thoughts on how starting hand values in No Limit Hold'em change when the stacks get deeper. Please feel free to share your thoughts. I am mostly looking to make the correct adjustments to my personal game and put some content on this specific subject out there as it was hard to find much material on it for me. The best thing I found are rankings based on a huge simulation of how each of the 169 possible hand combinations do against nine other opponents with no folding. Still very flawed, as that is not close to how poker is played, unless you got a really, really loose table. And then the obvious problem to me is that this simulation doesn't take into account the hand's playability. So just a few factors that go into qualifying starting hands, including that playability factor. Number one is a main one for this specific video, and that's stack depth. Number two is position, which is even more crucial as the stats get deeper as it becomes more powerful. Number three is the prior action. So an example would be a tight player raises from early position, and it folds to me on the button. King-queen offsuit gets a laugh at, while pocket fives with multiple callers in front of me is a slam dunk call. But versus a heads-up opponent, that's pretty loose, and I raised. Switch it around and give me king-queen offsuit all day. Number four is table dynamics, an example being lots of limping and calling versus lots of raising and heads-up pots, the second main consideration for these rankings. Number five, quality of opponents, so finding ways to exploit weaker players depending on their range. A hand being played deeper stacked and more multi-way both have a similar effect in that it typically takes a bigger hand to win. So hands that can hit big go up in value. Those hands are, of course, what you were probably thinking of in small pocket pairs and suited connectors, which I color-coordinated in my rankings that I'm going to show as blue. But I think these two types of hands go up in value in different ways. The small pocket pairs improve drastically in multi-way pots, which I believe the simulation does not truly show because these hands have extremely high playability. Multi-way pots can, in general, be very tricky to play. And small pocket pairs are the exact opposite, the simplest hands to play by far. If you see one of your numbers, you got a bingo. If not, hopefully your grandma wins. So your connectors, on the other hand, seem to me to improve more drastically the deeper stacks you play. This is because you don't have black and white flops like those small pocket pairs. When flopping weak draws, decent draws, and good draws, you want plenty of money behind to get better implied odds. These improve multi-way, just as pairs improve playing deeper, just not to the same extent. Positional advantage, I feel, also matters more for these complex hands than pairs, because when these hands hit the board, it is very easy to recognize and much harder to get value when you hit out of position. Sets, on the other hand, that are literally hidden on any board. With a similar pattern, the hands I believe slightly improve, more due to being multi-way than deep, are middle pocket pairs. They mostly lose their showdown value, but of course flop big with sets. Then the suited aces that can also make straights, suited broadways and gappers, plus complete offsuit connectors, improve more due to the deeper stacked than the multi-way. I differentiate because a connector like ace deuce plays pretty much like a three gapper because it can only hit one straight, three, four, five, and can never flop two-way straight draws using both cards. While Jack-10, on the other hand, can hit four different straights and can easily flop two-way straight draws. Completely different definitions of connector to me. Hands that I deem about neutral are big pairs, which goes against some common convention of you got to raise to narrow the field, then all other suited hands and gappers. The big pairs do indeed lose their showdown value of an overpair to some degree, but still hit huge and can set over set somebody, which you have to worry about more in these deeper stack games, 
but it's like the same thing with flush over flush as well. I raise and don't really mind if I get a bunch of callers. Just adjust and fold or definitely check on many more wet boards that you wanted in other situations when you have less collars. Over pairs on many boards are still great because they are hidden and they crucially have what most poker hands need to have big pots, worst hand to call, and other players having top pair. Now, these are the hands that go down in value, big and wheel offsuit aces. Top pair is easy to see, unlike the over pair, and will have trouble getting that second worst hand to call the deeper or multi-way the pot is. So, narrowing the field makes perfect sense with these types of hands. Ace-King offsuit is prime example. I feel its value goes slightly more down in multi-way pots than being deep stacked, and then trash hands become even trashier. And one card poker could be fine heads up and even good enough for a shove short stacked. But in either deep stacked or multi-way pots, these hands go straight to the dump. So just a very quick conclusion and summary. Out of your main playable hands, pocket pairs specifically perform relatively well in multi-way pots as well as out of position. Drawing hands specifically perform relatively well in deeper stack pots, but not so much out of position. Then offsuit big aces perform worse in both. Other offsuit broadways like King Jack and Queen 10, I put as neutral. But to me, they were somewhere in between slightly worse and neutral because they do make way more straights and flop better draws than the big aces. But just like the big aces, the value of them just making top pair goes down. That's more than enough talking for me. I will now leave you with my top 50 starting hands for typical live deep stack cash games. The specific situation I'm going for is you look down at your hand with no action in front of you and an unknown live low to mid stakes table. I will give you some opening ranges as well, but they didn't take into account the rake, which can kill your win rate and should make you play tighter pre flop. Anyways, Hope you enjoy.
to call me If you wonder what to call me You can call me King